If any man among you seem to be religious, well, do you seem to be religious? You see, Paul, uh, the reason why Luther had so much trouble with this thing is because he's getting right in the place where time after time it says, you see how a man is justified by works and not by faith only. That's in James. And what you try to do is you have to turn him into Paul and invent some alibi, alibi, some slick way of talking to get around it instead of believing it. The two examples given it, by the way, are Abraham and Rahab the harlot in the Old Testament. That's what James gives. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, well, God knows there are plenty of people like that, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is vain. Now, isn't that something? Is that Paul? That isn't Paul at all. He didn't tell you that. He didn't tell you if you didn't uh, bridle your tongue, your religion was in vain. That's James of the twelve tribes. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, that man's religion is in vain. When you get right down to it, it really gets uh, wild because he's about to define religion. And when he defines religion, it's works. Look at it, verse 20, 27. Pure religion, ready for definition? Pure religion and undefiled, no sinners, no sinfulness, undefiled before God the Father is this. Definition. This is the definition given to the twelve tribes of Israel. One, visit the fatherless, works. Visit the widows, works. Keep yourself unspotted from the world, works. That's James. Now, that the Catholics would give Luther a fit with that kind of stuff. They'd quote that to him, and he knew he was right, but he couldn't explain what he was reading. Just like your modern expositor can't explain it. They try to make the whole thing and say, well, there's only one way to be saved in any age, and they're all the same, and they're not. Do you know how many Gospels there are in that Bible that aren't Pauline? That is, are not Romans and Corinthians? Do you know how many there are? Well, Matthew wrote one Gospel, and Mark wrote another Gospel that omits some of the stuff and adds some stuff, and Luke wrote another Gospel, that's three of them, and John wrote another one, that's four of them. There are four Gospels that have stuff in them that differ from the other one and omit some of the other. Four of them. Do you know what the Gospel was? Abraham it had nothing to do with Christ dying for anybody. Right? The, 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 the Gospel he's given that you're told about in Galatians is that God take, would take him and give him as many children as there were stars in the heaven. And he, 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 he believed what God t- said about that, and therefore God gave righteousness to him because he believed only going to have the kids. That isn't the, what Paul preached. Paul preached, if any man preach in the gospel what I preach, why, he's preaching the wrong gospel. Well, God never told Abraham, Jesus Christ died for your sins and was buried and rose again the third day from the dead, and salvation is the Lord, and you get eternal life and eternal security by the death of Christ on the cross. He never said a word to him about it. Nor did he say one to Isaac or Jacob. And if you had quoted Isaiah back in the Old Testament, you'd really be in a mess because he would have lied to you. If you were in the Old Testament and preaching the Pauline Gospel, you'd take it from Isaiah chapter 53, and Isaiah 53 is written in the past tense, before Christ died for anybody. You'd be lying. You'd be saying he was moved for our transgression, he was bruised for our iniquities, when he wasn't. Now, that's the kind of thing you get, and the reason why you get this cheap, shallow type of Christianity have, you have today is your modern scholars, every time they find a passage they can't understand, they change it, or they misinterpret it. They fix it up so they can understand it, and then they say, well, that fixes that. No, it doesn't. It just it makes a great big mess. Pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is this. It is not by grace you are saved through faith, not not of yourself, the gift of God, it is visit the fatherless, works, the widows, works, and keep yourself unspotted from the world. Try to live the sinless. Works. Right in front of your face. And it isn't even aimed at the body of Christ. It's aimed at the, quote, twelve tribes of Israel. Got it? Well, if you've got it, you know much more than they know at the first biggest, twenty biggest seminaries in the United States. They could do nothing with it. 
Yeah, I had him bamboozled like I did Luther. And they'd use the old Catholic, he's out against Luther all the time in the next, in the next chapter to prove that works were involved. And they were wrong because it wasn't written to people in the church age that knew what Paul knew. It is aimed directly, directly at tribulation, which would have taken place if the Jews had accepted Christ in the book of Acts. And that's what I've taught you. And I've taught you right. And you're told I, you're taught right because it is not written to any church or any bunch of Christians. It is written to the twelve tribes of Israel. And in the tribulation, all twelve of them are there. Read Jer- Jer- Re- Revelation chapter 7. And they have 144,000, that's twelve times twelve, Jews preaching this stuff to them. James. So when he wants to talk about his... Uh, Gospel in the tribulation, you know what he says? He said, I saw a fifth gospel. I saw an angel flying in heaven, preaching the everlasting gospel. And it's not what Paul preached. You can't get the thing together unless you're going to believe it. And you were told one time in the Pauline epistle that if an angel from heaven preached any other gospel, God would curse him, and God didn't. You say, when didn't he? In the tribulation, the angel preaches the everlasting gospel. That's not the one Paul preached. Different dispensations rightly divide the word of truth.